What's going on, y'all? Machiavelli Mills TV. So, Keyshawn Davis, top rank fighter, who is trained by Brian Bomack McIntyre, who is the same trainer of Terrence Bud Crawford, right? Keyshawn is trained by Bomack. Keyshawn is on the brother, the, the guy, Punch Drunk Boxing. He's on his YouTube channel getting interviewed uh, by him. And Keyshawn Davis says that Jermel Charlo, he ain't fought no real in words, right? He said that if Jermel Charlo, he said Jermel Charlo will bitch out if he fights a real N-word like Terrence Bud Crawford, right? That Jermel will just, I mean, freeze up, automatically become a hoe. You know, he would, he said that he, you know, he don't, he don't know it what Jermel, he don't know Jermel uh, built, basically, I'm paraphrasing, built to take on a real N-word like Terrence Bud Crawford, right? And when I heard all this, I'm like, man, Keyshawn is something else, bro. Keyshawn really is out here making himself the poster boy to handle all of Bud's beefs. Like, Bud, not a grown-ass man who can talk for himself. You know, Keyshawn is a kid. So it looks funny, it looks weird when Keyshawn is on the front lines to fight Bud's battles. They're like, bro, like I'm looking like Keyshawn got to relax. He ain't Bud, like, you know, in the same age as Bud. He ain't Bud right-hand man. He Bud's a little, 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 little man. Way, like, I mean, younger than Tank Davis. You know, so it's like... He making himself the poster boy to handle all Bud's beasts. And I'm like, bro, like, nah, bro. You can't be out here carrying the Bud, like the pom-poms with Bud at every turn. He calling Jermail a kid and all this and all that. I'm like, look at, look at Keyshawn. And I understand Keyshawn is he's an extremely talented fighter. You know, got a lot of personality, trying to wear the black hat to make himself um, a household name. To make himself a guy that you got to watch out for or got to talk about. He's wearing the black hat. He's talking crazy, talking smack. He was coming at Errol Spence before. Now he's coming at Jamel Charlo because Jamel and, and Terrence Bud Crawford have, have exchanged words on social media and interviews back and forth, whatever, right? But to Keyshawn, I want to say this. Keyshawn, just because you, you train at the same gym as a fighter, right? Just because y'all train at the same gym does not mean you have to take on that man's beefs at every turn. Simply that, right? And that's how I know Keyshawn is a young kid. You know, he idolizes Terrence Crawford. And, you know, in, in boxing, guys idolize other fighters, especially guys that are older than them, guys that they want to have the same success as. You know, they they idolize them. And, they, okay, that's cool. You know, Terrence is an undefeated fighter, a champion in three different weight classes, undisputed at 140. You know, you can definitely aspire to be in the same ilk as that brother, but that don't mean you got to take on his beefs. But anyway, let me address what he said. He says that Jamel Charlo would be, will bitch out if he fought a, a real N-word any, 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 if he fought any real N words, especially like Terrence Bud Crawford, I'm gonna say this, man. I've criticized Jermel for, you know, doing some whole shit. When I say whole shit, not scary stuff, clowned out stuff like throwing his brother under the bus to try to appeal to Canelo Alvarez fans. Um, certain things, trying to have, trying to publicly criticize Deontay Wilder in hopes of gaining a fan base to not look like those other black fighters. Like, hey, hey, look, you know, he was trying to get at, hey, hey, look, guys, I'm not like one of those others, other black fighters. I, I disagree with Deontay Wilder. I'm calling Deontay Wilder out publicly. I'm not one of those other, other guys. I mean, I said that race doesn't matter in boxing. You all should like me. You all should cherish me. You all should support me. You all should revere me. You all should stand behind me. Uh, other fan bases, other, you know, Mexican fan bases, uh, white fan bases, European fighter fan bases, you all should support me because I don't back up Deontay Wilder's claims. I feel like he was trying to do that publicly, you know, um, to try to gain the support of those fan bases, right? But nonetheless, I'm going to tell y'all one thing right now. There's no uh, nothing about Jermel Charlo uh, seems like a scary dude. Don't, I don't see no hoe in Jermel as a fighter. I don't. I think if you ask him to fight Bud, he will fight Bud next week. Seriously, I really do. I think that brother has a um, a certain mean streak and spirit in him that does not allow him to cower to another fighter that's especially in the same weight class. I think that, you know, he's an angry motherfucker, always angry, mad as hell, him and his brother, both angry and pissed off all the time. But I don't think that's a facade. I really think that they carry that on their shoulder for whatever reason, you know, especially Jermel, carries that, 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 you know, that, that spirit, that anger, aggressive spirit on him 
And he carries it so much that it wouldn't allow him to back down a coward to a guy, to, to any guy. But I know not Terrence Crawford. Even if he feels like you have certain advantages over him and you may outbox him in certain instances, I believe that brother believes so much in his dog, in his aura, and, and he believes so much in who... I would think he believes in himself so much, he believes in who he is so much that he cannot cower to another man. And I think that he will fight Terrence. And I think that he will put, who will try to make it a dog fight and put everything into every single punch he throws against Jamel. I mean, against, against Bud. Now, before the second fight against Brian Castaño, I said that Bud would beat and outskill and outclass Jermail. I said that. Especially how Brian Castaño was making Jermail look in that first fight. However, after the second fight, where I saw him actually listen to um to uh to Derek James, at times it was some slippage. At times it was things that I was like, ah, oh, Jamel shouldn't have did that. Jamel should have done something different. Jamel didn't step on the gas pedal at certain times where I felt like he could have got Castaño out of there earlier. But the way he fought. That was the cleanest Jermel Charlo performance I've seen since he's been under Derrick James's um, tutelage, since he's been in his stable. Jermel looked masterful, for real, for the most part. And I'm like, wow, Jermel is not just simply out here just trying to swing for the fences and swing for the knockout punch. It's smart, calculated punches, calculated aggression. And if he fights like that and sharpens up things just a little bit more, I believe him and Terrence Crawford could be a 50-50 fight. Now, his advantage is he's a much bigger guy than, than Terrence Crawford. And Jamel can crack. And what we know about Bud is Bud, he can be lured into a dog fight. Bud has a lot of dog in him. And so he will stand there and trade with you and go back and forth if he feels like you're trying to hoe him or to try to show you he's not a hoe, which will, I think, not work to his advantage against a, a guy like Jamel Charlo. He'll land some tough shots in, but Jermel has a chin, has a really good chin for one. And Jermel will stand there and crack with you. And he will swing and try to hit you with some shit that will make you fold up like the lawn chair at the family at the Labor Day barbecue. You know that, and I, and I know that, and Bud know that. So it wouldn't be uh, wise for him to stand in the trenches and stand like in close quarters and try to trade with Jermel. Jermel is going to try to hit him with some shit. Like he like a, a punch, like that damn, I don't know, like a Deontay Wilder type shit. He, we, he doesn't have that type of power, Jamel. One punch knockout power, but he got some shit that if it builds up and he hits you with enough of them, you're going to feel it, right? So I think this could be a 50-50 fight for sure now. Um, can I see Terrence Crawford winning? Yes. I believe Terrence Crawford is more skilled than uh, Jamel Charlo. I think Errol Spence is more skilled than Jamel. So, for sure. But I think that the weight advantage that Jermail has, um, size, like I said, um, in the fight, in the fact that Bud likes to be in dog fights, especially when he got some animosity with you, he'll stand and try to trade with you. And I think that if he stands and try to trade with Jermail, Jermail's going to clip that chin and have him on some Bambi legs. He, Bud is susceptible to getting hurt. I'm not going to say he got a weak chin, but he's susceptible to getting hurt at times. Um, most visible we saw it was Gamboa, but most recently against Mean Machine, he got dropped. It was a, it didn't get ruled a knockdown, but it was a knockdown for sure. And even some of Bud's croonies, some of Bud's um close um close mentors, uh Andre Ward and Timothy Bradley, they can admit that against Mean Machine he got knocked down. And you see what I'm saying? Him trying to be a dog against Mean Machine caused him to get clipped. And Jamel, uh, Jamel Charlo is highly more than capable of clipping him. So it'll be an interesting fight. But to say uh, Jamel will bitch up, nah, bro. Ain't no bitch bone in Jamel's body. The way that Tony Harrison outclassed him that first fight, uh, not outclassed, outclassed him in certain moments, um, in certain moments in that first fight, and he came back and accepted their rematch and stopped him the second time, and the way, even in the second fight, Tony Harrison was looking even better in the second fight. Looking like he was outclassing Jamel at times. For Jamel to stay focused and say, you know what? This dude hit me with some shit. He doing some stuff I don't like. I'm not having my best fight at certain points, at certain points within his fight. But for him to stay focused and say, you know what? 
I'm gonna keep staying headstrong and I'm gonna hurt this motherfucker. I'm gonna hurt this motherfucker. And that's what he did. He was hitting, he was getting hit with some tough shots. When he stayed in there and said, you know what? I'm gonna I'm get him. I'm gonna stay resilient. I'm gonna get this dude up out of here. And that's what he did. He got him up out of there. He didn't let the oohs and ahs from the crowd distract him. Um, he didn't let the oohs and ahs from the crowd allow him to lay down. Because a lot of fighters do that. When they, when another fighter is getting the best of them and having certain very good moments, and they're hearing the oohs and ahs from the crowd, they started, they started to get distracted. They started to, they start to lose confidence. They start to get embarrassed, and they want the night to be over with so bad they will take a knee or do whatever to get out of the fight. Jamel Charlo hearing the oohs and ahs from the crowd, he's knowing that he's losing some rounds because Tony Harrison is, is extremely skilled, which is why I love watching Tony fight. Tony just got a weak, his chin not the strongest. He doesn't have a strong chin. Um, but yeah, like, Jamel heard that and still kept fighting and stayed resilient. And like, I'm going to get his ass out of here. And that's what he did. And he hurt Tony in fine fashion. So I can say this, even if Bud has really great moments against Jamel, Jamel's going to keep coming. What Deion Sanders say? I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> That's what he said to uh, the Colorado Buffaloes when he went to Colorado. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. And that's what's going on. It's going to be going on. Jamel is going to keep coming. In, in, he's going to be in Terrence's face all night. And Terrence is going to have, going to, have to get him up off of him. And he can hit Bud, with, Bud can hit him with some shit. But t t I know for a fact, Jamel... Got some shit that can clip butt and leave him in bad shape. So, I don't know what Keyshawn talking about. Jamel ain't going to hold up against that, brother. Jamel, that'll be a hell of a fight. Jamel's going to be a lot of animosity, a lot of shit talk, a lot of dudes wearing their heart on both of their sleeves, a lot of bravado. It's going to be a lot of just dog and a lot of just, you know, um, I don't know, it's going to be a lot of blood and guts in that fight. And you cannot count Jamel Charlo out at all because he's not going to cower to Bud in no shape, in no shape, form, or fashion. And I, I don't think Bud going to cower to him either. But to say Jamel going to bitch up, that's an inaccurate statement. Machiavelli Mills TV, I'm out. Peace.